All right, so here we begin with uh, chapter 15, which is in the fourth module given by ICAI. And uh, the topic that we are going to discuss is analysis of financial statements. So, let us talk about the learning outcomes. After studying this chapter, you would be able to examine the key features of the financial statements and its relevancy for better reporting. See why we have these uh, financial statement and financial reporting to be specifically designed and presented in a specified manner. It is because you need to make it relevant for better reporting. Examine the key factors to be kept in mind in preparation of financial statements. So, while you are preparing financial statements, you have learned all your indices, you know the requirement of company law with respect to presentation of financial statement, the format of the financial statements. If it is any specific entity like banks or insurance company, what norms they have to follow, considering all that what other factors you need to keep in mind while preparing financial statements that is one particular objective over here follow the best practices in the preparation of financial statements what is the relevance of this line see sometimes financial statements may or financial reporting criteria may allow you to follow certain alternate ways of reporting correct we would have learned for example when we are talking about uh, um, financial instruments okay the accounting for financial instruments where it is not a derivative accounting that is applied because there is involvement of a regular way of purchase or sale the standard gives you that is IFRS 9 or India 109 whatever you say it is allowing you two different approaches one is what we call as trade date accounting one is what we call as settlement date accounting correct so standard is allowing you both the ways we preferably should follow whichever is the best practice so while learning if you can recall uh, within india's 109 i have strongly recommended that it is trade date accounting that should be followed because it is more logical more conceptual and that is where ma majority entities are following trade date accounting so following something which is a better practice where standard is giving you an alternate way but you try to always follow a better practice that is yet another point okay so following the best practices in preparation so when i am reading a particular point what exactly is the relevance of that point what it is trying to target you should be clear with that analyze the common mistakes incurred by the preparers of financial statements in presentation of financial statement with respect to schedule 3 so what we have seen in the format of schedule 3 we have seen a typical format of presentation and this you know i have discussed in the most early part of your classes right when we have dealt with the conceptual framework and introduction to indias that time so what happens in reporting say in presentation and disclosure what kind of mistakes could be committed by the preparers of financial statements that is what we have to mainly look into and uh, we have to identify and rectify the mistakes found in the financial statements by addressing the issues prescribing the correct presentation and disclosure now uh, basically uh, you know your accounts department in your company might have presented or might have prepared the set of financial statements now you being you know a superior in your department your responsibility as maybe the chief accountant could be to identify what could be the errors and identify as well as rectify those errors in the preparation and presentation of financial statements and make sure that when it is formally published correct before that if there is any 
identified mistake it must be rectified and then it should be presented so all this care we have to carry out at the final stage when we are going for preparation and presentation of financial statements so now we talk about what all you have in the chapter overview so analysis of financial statements characteristics of good financial statements now guys uh, this part i don't have to actually explain you it is very clearly understandable everyone knows that we have to always go with true and fair view see what is happening in the business has to be reflected in your financial report that is the typical objective of your financial report so what is happening in your business should be reflected so i'll give you one simplest example the way we have moved as transition from the historical accounting to the modern accounting where we have started applying ifrs and ndas what change we have introduced so i'll typically pick examples from the accounting of investments and financial instruments because that is the area where the major significant change has happened compared to the traditional accounting so now what happens if you look into any investment made in any debt security like bonds or debentures of any company or you can say in the real life we go for bond valuation you would have learned extensively in your advanced financial management paper that we go for bond valuation when we go for valuation of bond we are looking into what is the discounting rate that we are considering what is the future cash flow of that particular bond or that debt security and how would you arrive at its present value and its present value is what should be reported now under the traditional accounting where we talk about accounting for investments everything will or was recorded at the nominal value so if you are holding bonds you are holding at cost cost at which you have acquired initially you measure at cost that is fine but then as per indas 109 you are supposed to follow the amortized cost method correct so amortized cost method gives much more relevance to the valuation of such instruments where the valuation norms followed in finance and what you are reporting and reflecting in your financial statements do not have a disparity that is where we are targeting true and fair view correct then what happens uh again you talk about various types of investments earlier suppose you have made investments in equity and earlier again if it is a long term investment it was always supposed to be carried over at cost now when you have acquired those shares in the company wherever you have invested say that time you have acquired those shares for just rupees 2 lakhs over a period of time say after maybe 4 years today the value of those shares is 8 lakhs four times it has risen up now you tell me what would be fair to show it at 2 lakhs or to show it at 8 lakhs the obvious answer is to show it at 8 lakhs because that is reflecting the true value of that security correct as a result earlier accounting procedure which was following the traditional accounting standards you know what was happening you were reporting investment in equity instruments of other entity at their historical cost only there was no scope of reporting it at the fair value but today if it is any equity instrument we report it at what value or we report it under what category fvtpl that is we report it at fair value we call that as financial assets carried at fair value through profit or loss the objective of doing that is to bring forward what is the relevance what is the real value of that asset instead of just carrying forward the amount of historical cost on year on year basis now what happens the earlier logic that was applied was the realization concept you purchased shares for 2 lakhs 2 lakhs actually spent out of your pocket you have paid that was a cash outflow today the value is 8 lakhs but we say that the gain what has been accrued over there has not been realized until the gain is realized i am not going to 
report that value at 8 lakhs. That was the logic followed earlier. But now we see realization that time was a big criteria. Correct? Realization was a big criteria because if you have not realized your gain, you are not supposed to recognize the gain. Now see, if you look into the financial markets today, the financial markets have become so efficient and they have become so flexible and they are becoming so liquid that the moment you want to sell the share, T plus 2, today you sell the share, within 2 days the money comes to your account, right? Within 2 days. So it is settlement happens as T plus 2, you know it very well how stock market settlement happens. As a result, because now realization is not a big deal, we are not focusing on the realization of that profit. You are simply allowed to carry that asset at its fair value and any difference in the fair value can be rooted through profit or loss. FVTPL is what. So that is one biggest example of true and fair view, right? So guys, when I say true and fair view, don't just carry a generalized meaning of true and fair view. Keep in your mind these specific important examples so that you get to understand that how in your exam, if you are bringing forward this particular example, you can say that this is reflecting what we call as true and fair view. Next is relevance. See, one of the characteristic of a you know, proper presented financial statement will be relevance. What you are reporting to whom you are reporting, that is where the relevance comes. I will give you examples for relevance. You see, when we go for interim period reporting, say quarterly reporting, we do not go for detailed reporting. We always go for condensed reporting, correct? We do not provide all the details because the time and the cost involved in reporting becomes very high. To eliminate that too much of cost and time involved, the relevance is not to go for the detailed presentation, but summarized and condensed presentation, correct? Another example I will give you, say a business which has some important segments should be presenting its financial report on segmented basis, correct? But all business are not compelled to do that on segmented basis. If you have multiple segments which are, you know, integral part of your business, then and then only you go for segment reporting. Otherwise, segment reporting is not needed. Then comes the next characteristic, understandability. See, what you are presenting in your financial statement should be understandable to the reader. So, your reader could be an ordinary shareholder, correct? An ordinary investor who is reading your financial statement. So, of course, we have to keep in mind the application of all NDAs and all the applicable standards and procedures and rules. But in spite of all that, it should be so simply presented that it is understandable always by anyone who is reading the financial statement. Then consistency is one of the very, very important characteristic and principle. When we are talking about consistency, you know which area we are highlighting? We are talking about consistency in adoption of accounting policies, correct? That is what we mean by consistency. So we are consistently adopting the same accounting policy. If we are changing the accounting policy, you know that as per the required standards, you will have to provide the disclosure of changes in accounting policies. Regulatory compliance. As I told you some time back, the generalized reporting as per Schedule 3 to Companies Act will be done. But if there is any specific entity like bank, it has to follow the RBI guidelines. If it is NBFC, it has to follow again RBI guidelines in terms of its reporting. If it is an insurance company, it has to follow its own regulation. So every type of entity must follow their specific regulatory compliance as and where applicable. And a universality. The biggest feature of adopting NDS was what? Worldwide, we have harmonization in reporting. Universality means what we are doing, what we are following as practice is followed by everyone. Isn't that something really, really important? Now, here we are talking about the next feature that is best practice. So, best practice is in terms of compliance, complete, simple and specific, transparency, materiality, integration of notes, 
disclosure of significant accounting policies, disclosure of key estimates and judgments and integrated approach. All these areas comes under best practice and then illustrations is what you have to cover up within this to understand how exactly we are going to achieve all this objective. So this is the whole chapter overview. This is what you are going to mainly learn within the chapter. Moving forward, this introductory part you should definitely read. So first thing what we observe over here is financial statement of corporate entities. Now when I am talking about financial statement of corporate entities, what exactly are we talking about? If it is a company, it has to follow the Companies Act and it has to follow the regulations of Indian Companies Act. And of course, as amended to the latest state, all the regulations so amended and updated. So you have to follow that. However, if there is any specific company like a banking company or insurance company, it has to follow its own regulatory guidelines. I have already talked about that. Now see guys, uh, when we have discussed this characteristics of good financial statements, I have already given to you the meaning of all these aspects, understandability, consistency, regulatory compliance, universality. And these characteristics were discussed at length and you see best practices here in best practices applicable to all companies. We are talking about again compliance. So I will just kind of you know give you a guideline on how exactly you are going to formulate the content within this. Financial reporting is a regulated activity and compliance with the requirement is a must. So we are talking about compliance over here comply with the standards and regulations but also ensure your financial statements are an effective part of your wider communication with your stakeholders. See the mode through which a company is communicating with its stakeholders is what financial statements. You and me we can communicate through maybe a zoom meeting session but how will a company communicate with its shareholders by the reports correct by the annual report by the director's report by the auditor's report which is all part and parcel of your annual report and other you know announcements made by the company to its stakeholders and shareholders. So basically do not forget that comply with all the standards and regulation but also ensure that your financial statements are an effective part of wider communication with your stakeholders. It should be simple and understandable without any change in the interpretation. So we are talking about compliance that you have to make the compliance into practice but do not make it appear to be complicated make it simple to understand for any reader of financial statement. So next part is just given over here as complete. I will give you guys a moment to just read this point and let me see what you interpret out of this. Complete. The information disclosed in the financial statements should be complete and should not lead to any further cross questioning in the minds of user. Ensure consistency of disclosure across the financial statements. So basically when we are talking about your financial statements being complete, there should not be any you know confusion arising in the mind of the reader. That is why for example, if we have certain events occurring after the balance sheet date, after the reporting date, we specifically report that. We report the nature of that event, we report sometimes with adjustment to the financial statements and we provide the relevant disclosures. If there is any discontinuing operation, we report that separately. When there is any extraordinary item reported in your profit and loss statement, we report it separately even with the reporting of your earnings per share. All these points become separately reportable just for one reason. Let us suppose a shareholder is observing that previous years EPS was rupees 7 and now suddenly the EPS has dropped to 2.5. Then you need to provide a disclosure why this has happened. Is it just because of decline of profit 
that is is it because of the profit from ordinary activities or there is some extraordinary item that has arisen or there was a dilution in your EPS because of certain major dilutive potential equity share now becoming part of your equity instruments actually. So, you need to provide the information in such a manner that it completely gives a clear picture to the reader of the financial statement or we can say user of the financial statement. Next point is simple and specific. Draft your notes, accounting policies, commentary on more complex areas in simple and plain English. See, the whole idea is not to forget that you are communicating with your stakeholders, you are communicating with the users of the financial statement. Your objective is not to make things complicated, your objective is always to make things simple. For example, when I am discussing something with you, you would always expect that sir should simplify the matter to us so that we know we can easily understand it. So if I am presenting not a textbook to in front of you but maybe a financial report in front of you, should my objective of simplicity change? The answer is no, it cannot change. My objective of simplicity remains. See the whole world is seeking one thing, simplicity in understanding everything because if it is simply understandable you don't put efforts you don't waste time behind that you read you understand matter gets over so ensuring that there are no vague or ambiguous note when you are presenting notes to accounts ambiguity should be ruled out it should be clarity 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 whatever you are reporting just put it for example certain assumptions were made while making an estimate you write down those assumptions that is what we have notes to accounts for right that these assumptions were considered for making a forecast of this future cash flow or this thing what we have reported is little uncertain this thing what we have reported is likely to face this kind of issues ahead when we are putting this kind of information with complete transparency what will happen your reporting becomes simple as well as specific. Here there is some example given. A definition of a derivative and a hedged item are now uh, and how the company uses such item. Now if you are having a particular item of foreign currency creditor and now you have used a forward exchange contract to hedge your foreign currency creditor. Basically to provide a hedge for foreign exchange rate fluctuation. Now you have learned this under hedge accounting and you have seen the foreign exchange rate fluctuation under India S21 as well that is effect of changes in foreign exchange rate. Now, Because your creditor is a part of a hedge arrangement it becomes a hedged item. So the reporting of that should not be as per India's 21 standalone. It has to bring into picture the hedge accounting as per India's 109. Are you getting my point? That that specific you have to be that this foreign currency creditor because it is a hedged item, the reporting has been carried out as per India's 109. What is covered by the standard under the category of hedged item? That creditor is a hedged item, and we are following the process of hedge accounting. So make your policies clear and specific, ensure there should not be any vague or ambiguous notes with no further information or explanation which may lead to misrepresentation of information. Reduce generic disclosures and focus on company specific disclosure that explain how company applies the policies. See do not give generic disclosure that for example I am into iron and steel business. So, okay, iron and steel companies are facing this kind of issue. Now, that is the industry viewpoint. We are not saying that do not provide that. But when it comes to your financial report, you cannot be industry specific. You have to be company specific. So, you provide the details of company. Yes, as a benchmark, you can always give comparison. Like for example, the return on asset ratio, what we are having is say 13%. 
but as per industry standards it is only 11 percent we are performing in general better than the industry standards that could be a different add-on correct when you are providing the industry data it could be an add-on but industry data standalone should not be given because nobody is asking for a general report people are asking for a specific report of your company okay uh, transparency I don't think I have uh, anything to explain over here within transparency materiality of course we have talked about materiality a lot in the early part of your discussion when it came to conceptual framework correct we have learned materiality in various aspects for example um, if I again go with uh, topics like segment reporting so whatever is you maybe you know 10 percent or more becomes material is what makes a segment a reportable segment we have seen correct in the kind of test that is we carry out whether a test uh, you know whether a segment is a reportable segment or not we carry out test that time what we do we apply materiality criteria another example i'll give you related party disclosure when it comes to related party disclosure we say that if there is any specific uh, for example what is the requirement of related party disclosure if you recall what you have learnt under related party disclosure that is in s 24 what you have learnt is when you provide related party disclosure of a specific type for example sale of goods to subsidiaries now sale of goods to subsidiaries you may have 13 subsidiaries so you don't report that sale of goods to a sale of goods to b sale of goods to c you just club all and just mention that sale of goods to subsidiaries as an aggregate but if within that you find two subsidiaries that have material effect of that particular transaction then again what could be the material effect over there has been interpreted within standards as if that particular transaction of that type is 10 percent or more of the total transaction amount then it becomes material and should be reported separately so materiality generally many standards have talked about and the common criteria which we experience is the criteria of 10 percent or more if anything is 10 percent or more it becomes material then <coughs> they have given certain examples which you can read and understand now integration of notes here which notes we are talking about is of course the notes to accounts notes cover largest portion of the financial statements correct your balance sheet your profit and loss statement your cash flow statement will be presented in just few pages but the other details which are presented forming part of notes to accounts that is the larger details right they are an effective tool of communication and have the greatest impact on effectiveness of your financial statement because all the explanation to every item of your financial statement is given where in the notes to accounts so that is why it is detailed and it provides all the explanation group notes into categories place the most critical information more prominently on combination of both integrate your main note of a line item with its accounting policy and any relevant key estimates and judgment now see see integration of notes what exactly is meant by integration of notes we have always observed that how you present your notes to accounts see your notes to accounts should not be scattered that even in the old practice you know if you see the traditional accounting standards the accounting standard one it also shows that you know all your accounting policies should be disclosed in one place correct so that your disclosure about your accounting policies is not scattered throughout your financial statements and then integrity so integrating all your notes to accounts for example we are talking about integration of your main note of a line item any line item in your balance sheet or profit and loss statement you pick what exactly is the needed information over there you provide that main line item note whichever assumption was applicable whichever judgment was applicable with respect to that particular item what practices you have followed for that everything should be mentioned in one gist at one place so that you know when the reader is reading that particular line item the reader is clearly understanding the 
all the matters relating to that one place that is what we call as making it integration of nodes. So, they have given examples of inventories look at this accounting policy inventories are stated at lower of cost and net realizable value cost includes all expenses directly attributable to the manufacturing process as well as suitable portions of related production overheads based on a normal operating capacity cost of ordinarily interchangeable items are assigned using first in first out cost formula net realizable value is estimated and selling price in the ordinary course of business is uh, less any applicable selling expenses. So, basically what it is they have given this one paragraph about accounting policy as an example how would you present your accounting policy for inventories. So, if you see cost of interchangeable items are assigned using first in first out cost formula basically if you read indas 2 indas 2 is allowing you that if it is interchange if it is non interchangeable item you cannot use first in first out method you know it right indas 2 specifies that if it is non interchangeable item you have to go with specific identification approach correct but if it is interchangeable item where you know you are just piling up all your inventory where each inventory could be interchangeable for example i have these two pieces of calculators with me which are identical ok. So, if it is this piece or this piece it is identical, but if I am talking about these two calculators they are completely different these are not interchangeable. So, when it is non interchangeable type of inventory what you need to do what you need to do you need to follow specific identification approach if it is interchangeable you follow either first in first out method or weighted average cost formula. Now, which one you have adopted you have to report it in your accounting policy. So, first thing what they did is with respect to accounting policy towards inventory what all policies have been considered they have listed out all the policies relating to inventory. Next thing significant estimates and estimation of uncertainty management estimates the net realizable value of inventories taking into account most reliable evidence available at the reporting date the future realization of these inventories may be affected by future technology or other market driven changes may reduce the future selling price. So, basically you are reporting the NRV net realizable value of inventory as at that date guys understand one thing it was a situation prevailing on that date if the situation changes the value may also undergo changes correct in such case when you are showing estimation of uncertainty after your accounting policy you are reporting something about the uncertainty associated to that particular line item. Then inventory consists of now what is included in your inventory as on this date and the previous year. So, the reporting date and the previous year comparison. So, your inventory is into raw material and consumables and merchandise of course, it is in relevance to this particular entity. Your inventory may be little different and you might have to give the segments of your inventories Maybe you have WIP inventory as well you have some kind of uh, separate identifiable inventories which are mentioned separately as the component of your inventory. So, how much is raw material how much is the finished product how much is the WIP you mention each of these and the details of invent. So, basically this 18,000 in rupees crores huh? in rupees crores 18,000 in your balance sheet there will be one figure 18,000 crores the breakup of that 18,000 crores in comparison with the previous year information the related accounting policy the related uncertainty everything has been mentioned at one place this is what we call as integration of notes. I believe this was a very fine example for you to understand what is exactly meant by integration of notes. Disclosure of material accounting policies. So, I do not think I need to provide you any explanation on any uh, material accounting policy you already know that if there is any material accounting policy and any changes relating to that you have to provide the disclosure. So, just if I quickly read it out for you it says the financial statements should disclose your material accounting policies disclose 
only your material accounting policies remove your non material disclosure that do not add any value see when you are putting some information which is no use for the shareholder correct shareholder will also say why are you giving me all this information i don't need that so provide information only what is material your disclosures should be relevant specific to your company and explain how your policies come into practice or what kind of policies and how you apply them the aim of accounting policy disclosure is to help your investors and other stakeholders to properly understand your financial statements use judgment to determine whether your accounting policies are material considering not only materiality of the balances or transactions affected by the policy but also other factors including the nature of the company's operations everything you have to integrate and then go for the disclosure of material accounting policies they have given certain examples over there disclosures of key estimates and judgments again it is not something that requires any explanation you know that any kind of key estimate involved we just took that example of your net realizable value estimates involved in inventory that could be taken as an example that the key information was reported over there and i already explained to you that what we need to follow is integrated approach your accounting policy that you are reporting the entire financial report that you are making up has to have an integrated approach let me read it out for you so that you get lot more clarity financial statements are just one part of your communication with the stakeholders an annual report typically includes financial statements a management commentary and information about governance strategy and business developments csr reporting business responsibility reporting there is also a growing trend towards integrated reporting now many students they are telling me that sir now from the new syllabus topics like csr and integrated reporting why we are still studying that guys understand one thing not as part of your curriculum but i would want you to learn that anyway because even in this material when i am talking and when i am reading about these lines don't you think that integrated reporting if you have listened to my class on integrated reporting that is the future of your financial reporting you believe it or not the reason why those things are coming csr integrated reporting that is basically part of your future of financial reporting and that is where i would say whether included in your curriculum or not you guys are going to be chartered accountants at later stage you cannot end up giving excuses to someone that you know i did not learn integrated reporting just because it was not in my curriculum you are supposed to know what is integrated reporting at least as a general knowledge you should know so from my content my team advised me that sir students are getting confused why are we still providing these classes on integrated reporting i said let it be there don't remove it even though it has been knocked off from the curriculum but let it be there because as a matter of general knowledge and general understanding let students understand what is the impact of integrated reporting corporate social responsibility and many other interrelated factors to ensure overall effective communication consider the annual report as a whole and deliver a consistent and coherent message throughout see guys considering <laughs> your communication suppose i draft a letter correct i draft a letter where i am putting forward a complaint then from the beginning till end the tone of the letter has to be a complaining tone correct you know you are students you keep messaging me sometimes certain students they tell me that sir i am facing these all problems i haven't received this class yet my class is not working this software is not working so when you are in the tone of putting forward a complaint it should be that way then when you are putting forward a message to me for maybe you know making or me helping you to make a plan for your preparation for examination you have to maintain that particular objective of the discussion 
if you are talking about your troubles in terms of time availability and you are not able to study, your message to me has to be delivered in context of that. So that the moment I read your message, I should not get confused whether a student is complaining or the student is trying to convey their problem or a student is trying to appreciate of what I have done for them or what I have provided to them. What exactly you are trying to communicate, your one communication should be signaling that communication only. As a result, when I say from corporate entities viewpoint, a company is providing its financial report to its stakeholders. It is conveying some message through that. That message has to pass on to the stakeholders crystal clear and the whole matter should be presented as one message to the shareholder. See, either in the current year we have done better, we have done worse or some unfortunate incidents happened or such and such thing happened. There will be always one typical mode of presenting your message to the stakeholders and that is where you cannot have you know bits and pieces where the reader is getting confused you know in terms of whether company is performing or not performing what exactly is happening you have to give clear information to the stakeholders and that should be your objective of reporting then india's one also acknowledges that one may present outside financial statements a financial review that describes and explains the main feature of company's financial performance and financial position and the principal uncertainties it faces. Many companies also present outside the financial statements, reports and statements such as environmental reports and value added statements particularly in industries which environmental factors are significant and where employees are regarded as an important user group. Now, for example, uh, I don't know whether you have watched that particular video of mine. If you are a CMA student, you would have definitely watched that video. You know, there was a concept in CMA exams. It was included in their curriculum. So, that was titled as Triple P Bottom Line Reporting. Now, it has been upgraded to 4P bottom line reporting. So for CA students this is not in their curriculum. But again as I said integrated reporting CSR like that if I talk about value added statements if I talk about 4P bottom line reporting all those factors are going to be part of your reporting definitely in the coming future. So I don't know with uh, whether you have covered up that um, video that I have put on YouTube about 4P bottom line reporting, I would say not to take it as a serious matter, but definitely just to enhance your general awareness about what is this 4P bottom line reporting. Because if not in your curriculum, at least you should be aware of this. The moment I am talking about you might be wondering, oh, what is this 4P bottom line reporting what sir is talking about. If you are wondering, then as soon as you put an end to this particular class, you should have an objective. You write down in your notebooks as a pending task that I must watch the video on 4P bottom line reporting. It's a beautiful video that I've designed for your understanding in a simplified manner. You must watch that 4P bottom line reporting and you will understand that yet it is another dimension of reporting and which could be a highly relevant criteria in the financial reports ahead. So, all this comes under this uh, integrated reporting. I mean in this heading that is integrated approach. I will not say integrated reporting because if I say integrated reporting it conveys some different meaning altogether. So, the integrated approach is what we have to follow. CSR disclosures as required by companies act and so this could be yet one particular uh, you know report that is CSR. It is not a mandate, it could be presented as an additional information outside your financial statements. Now we have uh, the next thing as case studies based on NDAs. We have 1, 2, 
then 3, 4, 5, 6. All these case studies could be considered as basically examples given by your institute about what kind of you know case study based questions they would be asking. 7, 7 that is all, 7 case studies and then you have questions given at the back side of the book. So, what I have discussed with you theoretically and conceptually is all what is the base of this particular topic that is analysis of financial statements. Now, what I am going to do is if you are watching this class on live basis of course, as and when I am conducting this discussion with you, you will listen to me. But if you are watching it on recorded class basis, I would say uh, after each case study, you take a break, you take a halt, you know consider each case study as one lecture. So, I will do one thing when I am putting it as a recorded video, I will purposely make one video on one case study only. So, that you know you do that one video, one case study finished that is all. I would want you to definitely take a break even if your mind is able to understand something more, I would still emphasize on taking a break because before you jump into the, net, the next case study, you should be able to think because the idea is not that what I am speaking you just listen to that. The idea is in exam when you are watching a particular case given, you should be able to analyze that particular matter in the examination hall without anyone's help. Your brain has to work. And what I am strongly recommending before watching any video on the case study, I would say you can go back to the videos on conceptual framework and introduction to NDS. Make sure that your understanding about all NDS is clear. This topic is not to be done at early stage of your learning. This is one last topic in your syllabus because you should be having a very good approach of preparing the content of financial reporting from examination viewpoint. So, I generally recommend students that three standards or three topics they should be doing necessarily at the later part or as the last stage. I would say one of the topics will be in days one itself. Many may follow that you know in days one is such a basic thing for presentation we must do that first I do not recommend that in days one you should do at the end so that when you have learned all other things you can actually understand in days one very well in days 101 that is first time adoption of in days is also going to be critical if you do not know how to deal with each in days separately understanding in days 101 becomes little complicated and then it is this topic. So, guys I would strongly recommend all of you one thing. If you are watching this as a recorded class and you are going to begin with the case studies videos now, you must make sure that all these earlier parts you should be clear. So, that when I am discussing a particular case with you in the videos, you should be able to use your brain, apply your brain. Do not watch those videos as if you know just a kind of series going on and you are just binge watching the whole series of okay this happened in case 1, this happened in case 2, this happened in case 3 wow series got over correct. You will wait for what next season it is not your objective. Your objective is when I am discussing a particular case study you should be able to use your brains. And uh, with this I would say I will be putting an end to this particular session and what I will do is in the next video you will be getting started with me the discussion on case studies on one by one basis. Okay?